Hello again guys, Audi here from the basement barbecue in Brisbane. Today we're going to be going through a skin fade, a mid skin fade. We're going to be doing a little beard trim at the end but not really going into depth about it. Um, we will do another video for you guys shortly. We're going to be using Wild Seniors, Wild Foil Shavers, Wild Magic Clips with a ceramic blade and Andis Pro LI trimmers. There's a few little still shots in there just to see how we um, go through the steps of the fade. Uh, so hope you guys enjoy. If you haven't already, subscribe. Give us a like, give us a thumbs up if you like any of our content. And if you do really want to see anything different or you're struggling to learn something, give us an email or drop a comment below and we'll be sure to respond as fast as possible. Thanks again, guys. Enjoy. So welcome to another video. This is our skin fade basics video. Uh, as you can see, this dude hasn't had his hair cut in a while. He's actually my brother. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wet his hair down first and we're gonna, and we're gonna comb it and then blow dry it so that it's sitting natural, so that there's no hat hair. Um, and this is really good for people who are in the shop who come in with really overgrown hair um, and who really, really like need a restyle. You wanna make sure that it's wet down properly and dried in the correct way. This is so that the hair sits naturally so that you can really give your customer the best haircut possible. So we're gonna start off with our three on top. Start in the middle on the top, work your way from the forehead to the crown. And then we're just gonna take as much off as possible as fast as possible because this is quite an easy step and you don't want to take too long on this. Come back vertically first and then go forwards and then we kind of come across the head from right to left and then left to right. I'm using my Wild Seniors here and with the premium guard. So we're just going back and forth. The next step, we've got our wild details here. And we're just gonna put that zero line in first. We're gonna start from the temple. We're gonna work our way back to the occipital bone. We're gonna make sure that line is nice and straight. Straight, but not dead straight. We're gonna make sure that it's a clean line. We're gonna make sure that it's curved. It's got a nice little curve on it. And it's gonna come all the way back to the back of the head. And we're gonna take all of that length off underneath. Make sure you've got a fade brush close by when you're doing a fade. If there's a lot of hair left on the head when you're doing a fade, all the little bits, all the little like tiny, tiny hairs can really play a big part. You wanna make sure that they're not sweating too much. Um, you're, in a, you're in a good lighting environment. You've got heaps of light, you've got heaps of natural light. All of these little bits and pieces can help your haircut be 10 times better. So now we're on the other side, same again. Start from the, the temple, just under that arch there. Work your way back to the back of the head. Make sure that line's nice and straight and then start removing the bulk. You might not always get it right all the time. I've been doing this for almost 10 years now and you know sometimes it's always not, it's always not perfect the first time. But this is why I like to do my left side first, then my right side, and then do the middle at the back. If you've got your, if you've got your height right on your left and the height right on the right, then your, your middle will come together nicely. Again, blow dry all that hair off, make sure that there's no hairs there, make sure that it's a nice and clean canvas that you're working with. So you, as you can see, it's a nice curve, a nice arch. It's got a nice little 
Curve at the back as well. Same on the other side. Nice and consistent. Now we're on to our next step. We've got our foil shavers. What I like to do is I like to go all the way up to the line. And if you go as close as possible, Once you've done, once you've gone all the way up to that, that first guideline, then you can go and remove your bulk. As you can see how much of a difference the foil shavers make. On the left side, you can see that it's a true, it's true skin. Like there's no little black dots anywhere. Whereas on the side that we haven't done, there's still heaps of little black dots. So. We'll go to the other side and we'll get those off and then we'll go on to the next step. What I like to do with the foils is you kind of come in and you kind of hit, hit the line, but drop your, but drop the foil down like just as you're hitting the line. You don't want to come in with too much pressure, but you don't want to come in with not enough pressure. A lot of people like to do their fades first and then get rid of all the bulk underneath. But for me, it's a visual thing. And if you can see visually like how it's going, like start to finish, like I think my result is better the way up that I've done it. Now we're, we're going in with an open clipper, basically a half guard, but we're not using a half guard. And I like to do this part quite fast. Um, the faster you do it, I feel the less, the less room for error you make yourself. It's not an easy technique, but you just need to give it a go. And then you really, you really like, you know, make yourself aware that like, oh wow, like this is actually not that hard. As we stop here, we can kind of see how, how it's starting to transition from the skin to the zero to that line that we put in as well as what we've just taken out at the top. So we're slowly like closing our clipper. Each pass we do, we're going down in the lever. So we're, we're pushing it up, but we're technically like bringing the clipper down and down and down. Now you can see that, that that hard line is just about gone. There's still a little bit little bits of pieces in there that we're just we're just getting out. But as we go through the steps, you want to make sure that it's 99% finished, and then you can come back to it at the end. So you can see now that 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 half that. That bulk is now removed. Now we're onto our two guard. So we're gonna go through, and we're just gonna go underneath that ridge at the top there. And we're just gonna flick it out. I usually only take about four, four passes on each clipper when it comes to a guard. So then now we're onto our one and a half, We've done our four passes, down onto the next guard, try not to waste any time. We start with the one and a half open and then we work down to closed. A fade is almost like a rainbow. Like you wanna see that, like those nice colors just transition into the next, same as a fade. You just wanna see it go dark all the way down to light. So now we've got our one guard, we're gonna start open, open one. We've still got a little bit of heaviness through there. So we'll use our open one and we'll just start flicking that out and going through that heavy part in the middle of the fade.
not fade related, but I really struggled trying to fix this rolling shutter on this video. I really hope that we can fix it next time. Now we've finished with the one guard. We went from open down to closed, and we didn't actually need to use the half guard on this side. Yeah. And just before we go over to the next side, we're just gonna line him up just down the bottom here. And then if you feel like it, use your trimmers just to hit any little like hard little hairs you can see in the fade there. Onto the left side now, again, open clipper, wild magic clips, probably one of the best clippers I've ever used for fading. It's got a ceramic blade on it at the moment and they are amazing, super sharp, no issues, always consistent, doesn't pull on the hair. So we'll go and take all that bulk out first and then we'll get on to the next step. Speed it up now. So starting to close the clipper. Don't be afraid to turn, turn your clients' heads. Don't be afraid to tilt them side to side. Sometimes the lighting can make it harder. So try and try make sure that they are in the right spot when you are doing certain parts of their haircut. Don't be afraid to turn the chair around. So nice and easy, that heavy line's already gone. And then on to the next step again, number two. Open number two, start at the top of that heaviness and then slowly work your way down. On the second pass now, the lever just closed a little bit. Close it a little bit more. Brush, brush, brush. Make sure you've got that fade brush, you're still using it. One and a half guard now. Pass one. Pass two. Pass three. Pass four. Heavy line still. Number one, open. Open number one. Nice and easy, flicking it out. Try to stay in your range when you're doing your fade. You don't need to flick out as high as the last guard that you did. As you can see, I'm only staying in that little area where I need to be. So we're just about almost closed now, almost fully closed, almost, almost finished. Now the Andis Pro LI trimmers, super sharp. They only need to be zero gapped the tiniest bit from when you buy them brand new, but um, they are so good. Never had an issue with them, touch wood. Never dropped them, touch wood. And again, just with three little teeth on the side of your trimmers, you can just like hit those little, 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 little hairs just at the bottom. Instead of using all, all the teeth, just use a tiny few little teeth and you just go back and forth and just hit any little hairs that might not have, that might be making the fade look a little bit off. 
another technique. It's not really bashing it with the thinners, but it is kind of using your thinners in a different way. You're only really using a few little teeth here, but you are going deep into the top of the fade and you are just hitting out any of those really heavy spots. Sometimes you get clients with have that, sometimes you get clients that have really good heads and you, you just need clippers. Sometimes you wanna go a little bit further and you wanna use your thinners or you wanna use your shears and you just wanna hit any little dark spots. Whatever works for you, just make sure that you do it really well. So we're on to the back now. Back to the number two. Open number two down to a closed number two. And then open number one and a half down to a closed one and a half guard. Back down to the open one now. A little bit of a camera reshuffle, make sure that that angle's right and the lighting's good. Now sometimes the back of the head can be one of the hardest parts to do. If you've never cut someone's hair before, they may have a lot of bumps, a lot of bones in their head. They might have tight skin, they might have loose skin. All of this plays a part in your fade. If you do a fade and it's, and it's, on, it's on one of those bones, can kind of make it look like your fade kind of has like a bit of a, I don't know, like a hump in it. Sometimes, you know, the next, the next time that you go and do that haircut, you might want to do it a little bit lower. A good thing to do sometimes is when you do your consultation, touch their head and kind of feel where those bumps are, feel what their skin is like. If their skin's super loose, you're not gonna work, you're not gonna wanna work too fast with the clippers. You're gonna wanna work a little bit slower. If their skin is super tight, it's gonna be a lot easier for you, I feel. And as well as like the hair density as well. If their hair density is quite heavy, they've got a lot of hair, it's gonna be a lot easier to do a fade. Um, if, you've got, if you've got a client that's got quite thin hair or it's not quite dense, you might have to do a lower fade and stretch it out a little bit longer so that it does look like what they're asking for. So that's just about finished now. Go back in with the trimmers. Hit any little hard spots that you can see. You know, you might not take a photo of every haircut, but I believe that, you know, if you're charging good money for your hair services, if you're charging top dollar for your service, make sure that you know your haircut is really really good it is a hundred and ten percent the best haircut that you have ever given them every day all day the best feeling is doing a good haircut for your client getting a new client the next day and they came in because they just saw how good their haircut was you know they might have been in the shops or they might have been at the gym and they just asked you know your haircut's so nice like where did you get it from you know, that is like the most rewarding thing that you can do. So just check, check in the fade now, making sure that it looks good in the light. There's no dark spots where they don't need to be. I don't like to really do straight, straight lines. I don't really like to do too many straight fades. I always, no matter how hard I try, I always seem to just curve it a little bit. What do you guys think? If you like it, post a comment. So coming up now, lining them up at the front. Start in the middle, work your way to the left, then work your way to the right. My brother, he doesn't really like it too, too crazy. Just, we're, just, we're just doing like a natural line up here. We're not, not trying to make it too crisp. If you have never lined a new client up before, just do it, do it nice and easy the first time. If they like it, take it back a little bit more. If they don't like it, unlucky, but it's always best to just do a little bit at a time. You take a little bit off each time, ask them if they like it, if they say take it back a little bit more, you know what I mean? You won't fail. Make sure that you show your clients that you really do care, you know, like, take it back, ask them how it looks. If it looks good, sweet. If it doesn't, keep going. I did want to do a beard trim 
in this video, but I did run out of time filming it, so I just did really do it quite quickly. You basically do your fade, but you do it back to front. You still do your same guards, but then you're working up to the line. So you do your two, then your one and a half, then your one, and then you get back to that line there. And then you're just using your open clipper, and then you're kind of closing it, opening it, closing it, just trying to make sure that there's no real heavy line there. And once you've done that, I like to line up the cheek. Once again, my brother doesn't like it too heavy, doesn't like it too crisp. So we just kind of do it a little bit natural. I usually try and take as much hair off as possible with the trimmers. And then with the razor, it's just really just taking it down as low as possible. Line him up at the back there as well. Make a nice straight line. You'll probably see him in more videos. You'll probably see him in different haircut videos as well, but he's, a, he's, always, he's always eager for, a, for another haircut. He's always eager to try out new things. And as you can see in the photos, it's quite, it's quite consistent, it's quite good. If you like the video, if you like, if you like how we teach, if you like how we do our tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. The more love we get from you guys, the more videos we'll try and make.